Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and today is June 1st. That's right. You know what that means? That means that it is time for a new Fat Quarter Club project. So we only thought it would be fitting for this month for it to be something featuring Tula Pink because everybody is all up in excitement over her new Curiouser and Curiouser collection, which we're getting any day. In fact, by the time you're watching this, I bet it's in stock at the store. Anyway, so we are not going to be using the Curiouser and Curiouser this month, but we are using six fat quarters from the homemade collection. And, you know, that super awesome uh, sewing room type stuff with the little scissors. There's a ruler one. There's all kinds of cute things. So we have a selection of that. And I put together um, with Amy's help because, you know, she's the Tula Queen at Bernina of Naperville. And we put together a um, project that is a clutter catcher pin cushion. Now we've made this before. You might have seen the ones in our store that have the Bernina design on it, but we've adapted it a little bit for some Tula stuff. And this month we're going to use embroidery and we're going to do some really fun decorative stitches. So please let's get started and you can join me and it's going to start right here on the computer. So here is the pincushion stuff that's been cut out according to the instructions that of course are tied to the uh, details of this video. And you can also find them on BerninaofNaperville.com under classes and events under our handout section. And we even put it in the fat quarter of the month product description. So hopefully you find the instructions some way. Um, but I just took our six fat quarters and cut them up into the pieces that we need. So the step one of doing our clutter catcher pin cushion is to take a little bit of SF 101. Now this is our six inch square of the piece that I want to embroider. And this piece, I just want to back it with the SF 101 just to give it a little bit more stability. And I'm going to fuse that down because that is a fusible product. And that's going to be fused down onto the wrong side of this. Then um, I'm going to use some of my favorite uh, tearaway stabilizer. This happens to be a peel and stick stabilizer because you can see I cut my piece exact to size. So I'm just going to use this, hoop it up in the hoop and stick it down. And then you're really going to like what we're going to embroider on top of that. All right, these are the hanging tabs for our bag. And all I want to do is just prep these while I'm pressing. And if you want, you can just push the press these in half to find the center, just like this. And then here we go. press this one and then press again and if you want to give it a little bit of steam that's okay And then this is the envelope back of our piece. So I'm gonna give this a press, but all I'm gonna do is press this up about just a little bit less than half an inch. Just eyeball it. This is not rocket science. <laughs> and then we're gonna press it up again. And do the same thing onto this one. Okay, so now the way that these are gonna go together is they're gonna be forming a little opening there for our bag, just like that, so that we can, you know, just like a little pillow. All right, so the first step is after I've fused my SF-101 to the back of the top of my pin cushion, I, this is my staple stick that's hooped in the hoop, but I've got the shiny paper side up because now I'm just gonna take my pin 
and score this around like that. And then that is going to provide me with a sticky surface so that I can embroider my little saying here on my pin cushion. And I'm not gonna worry too much about exactly how I'm positioning this because I have pinpoint placement. I'm gonna use my Bernina 880 Plus. And, um, and I also have a little grid right here on the fabric. So my plan is to kind of put my little saying like right in here. And so let's design it on our machine and then let's stitch it out. So we're gonna have a little fun here with our Bernina 880 Plus. Now, in all fairness, you can do this exercise that I'm gonna do on the Bernina 790 Plus and the 590 and the 500 and the 700. The only thing is you're not going to have this feature on the Bernina 535, 570, and 770 embroidery machines. But we're just going to work in the fonts, and this is an exercise on group and ungroup. So let's pick the font folder, and I'm choosing the number 13 font, this scripty uh, font here. And you can see all of the letters are in capital. Well, that's because that's the default. So I'm going to be using capital letters and lowercase letters. But if you wanted to use numbers and symbols like this, you certainly could. Now, let's go to here. And I am going to write stick it. Because that's what you do with your pin cushions. You stick the pins on the pin cushion. So that's going to be a capital S. And then a lower T, I, C, K, then a space. And then just, I wouldn't really write this for real if I was writing a novel, but I'm making my I uppercase and then my T lowercase. And then I hit the green check button. After I do that, I have a little bit here that I have to examine. And one of the things is I want the T, I, C, K to be a little bit closer to that S, and I want the T a little bit closer to the I, and then I'd sort of like to then take it and move it down a little bit, so that's what I'm gonna do. So anytime you wanna do some little extra editing or any editing, you're gonna hit this I button, and that's the information button. And this is where you've got your move around tools, your rotate tools, and all of those things. Well, we just are looking for this one. It's a box with a plus sign adding to it, and that is the group and ungroup icon. So this is all stuck together, so I'm going to minus that. And then you can see here I have this segment. So what I'm going to do first is move my little T-I-C-K closer to the S, and you could also do that using your multi-function knobs. The top knob moves it side to side and the bottom knob moves it up and down. You can see that, see? That's up and down. And then this is side to side. Then I don't want to move the I, I want to move the T. So over here on my layers area, I'm going to hit the T and then I'm going to move it closer to my I just like so. Now, what if I want to take some of these elements and group them again? Well, that's pretty easy. All I'm going to do is take the I, and now I want to add the T. And now as we click on that, we can see that that's stuck together. In the same fashion, if I wanted to take the S and add the T-I-C-K back to it, I could certainly do that. So now those two words are separate and I can move them around however I like. But I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. So now it's time to stitch this old thing out. All right, so there's our stick it. That's just going to tell us where we're going to put our pins on our pin cushion. And now all I want to do is just back out just a little bit and show you how to use pinpoint placement. So I'm going to hit my little I button here and I'm going to scroll up and find the pinpoint placement button. And then I want, I'm just going to use this little grid here and all of the little dots on this grid represent um, an anchor point basically. 
So I want to just make sure that my stick it is written straight across this little ruler fabric. I'm just going to start by touching the center dot there just so I can kind of use my multi-function knobs and get it right in the center of the hoop how I like it. All right, and once I got that there, I want to make sure that it's on here straight. So now I'm going to touch the side one. There it is, and it's right on the line, and I'm happy with that. And now I'm touching that one, and that one is also right on the line. So I am ready to stitch this out. I didn't even have to make any adjustments other than centering it. So I'm going to say set. I'm going to close, and now I'm just going to hit my needle and now I'm ready to stitch out. Now I wanna show you something. So now here's our stitch out screen. And right now this is interpreting a lot of different elements on this guy. Well, I want this to be all done in one color. So I could either press this, which is for color sequencing, and that will put all of my colors together. But because really I only wanna do the one color, I could have also used the monochromatic button which is that one right there. So either one of those will do in this application. And I have threaded up a nice pink 50 weight Aurifil thread, and now I'm ready to stitch. All right, it's all done. So now it's time to construct the pincushion cut clutter catcher. And don't be afraid to just remove this out of the hoop just like this. The lettering was tight enough that we can just peel that stabilizer right off of there. There we go. We don't need to be too crazy with getting it all out. That looks pretty good. All right. Woo! Stick it, everybody. Stick it. So I'm going to sew my little um, tabs together, and I'm going to start with the folded over edge here like this, and I have a straight stitch with the needle position moved three notches to the right. So we're gonna line that up like so and just press the foot control to get started. And I've got two of them to make, so I might as well chain piece them. And then I'm just going to sew a little. Okay, those are done. And now I can do my little hem. And so I'm going to line this up just like this here. And I'm gonna, I haven't moved my needle position or anything. And I've got the number 10 edge stitch foot on here. And I really like this one for any time I'm doing top stitching because I can just line my little fold or the edge of my material or whatever right up to that little groove and I get a really nice professional looking top stitch. So those two are done. And then while I'm here, I'm just going to take these pieces. Now these are the pieces that we're going to end up stuffing with our polyfill and our weighted stuff so that it doesn't slide all over the table. But what we're going to do is we're going to stitch and leave a little opening here. So I'm just going to go around here probably about two inches from the edge and I'm using, I want to use a quarter inch foot now because all of our seams are a quarter of an inch and I'm using the dual feed 97 foot. So the 97 D 
And like I said, I'm gonna start about two inches from the edge. And I needed to move my needle position back to center and tell my machine what foot I'm using. I'm sewing this on my Bernina 790 Plus. Now I'm gonna stop and pivot. Oops, I gotta go just a little bit more. Sometimes on these, I'll take like a little diagonal stitch just like that. I, um, this isn't the most accurate piece, but this is just our little center piece. And now just a couple inches in, reverse, and cut. And then I'm going to trim my corners there, turn this inside out, stuff it and then hand sew the opening so it looks like that other piece I showed you. So these are our two pieces that we hemmed. So I'm putting these on our, our piece. So I'm gonna put the top piece on first, just like that. And then I'm lining this piece up and these are right sides together. And I'm just lining everything up and you'll see here that there's an overlap right there. Just like if you were making a little envelope style pillowcase. And now I'm gonna pin and I'm gonna stitch a quarter of an inch all the way around. And now I don't have to leave an opening or anything because the opening is inside there where I'm gonna turn it inside out. But before I sew this, I have to add the straps. So I wanna be able to put these guys on. And what we wanna do is the straps are gonna go on the bottom of our bag, which this is the bottom. If we can see, see in there, it says stick it. This is the bottom. So they're gonna go three quarters of an inch in. So I'm just gonna use my ruler here. I'm gonna take this pin out, pull this back, and the three quarter inch line is right there. So I'm gonna line that up like that and pin. And when you sew around here, be careful not to catch the strap in the seam allowance as you go around your bag. And now on this side, I'm gonna go three quarters of an inch over as well. And that's about right there. Okay, now we're gonna sew all the way around. I'm just gonna start on the edge here and go all the way around. So let's take our scissors and trim. Ah, I need bigger scissors for this. Okay, let's just trim. Be careful not to trim over your stitching line. Okay, so now we turn it inside out. You want to know what those noises are that's Camilla 
eating her feet. All right, so there is our little pin cushion part, and now we just need to make the bag part. So the next part is pretty easy. We're gonna take our three strips that we cut. This one is four and a half, this one's three and a half, and this one's two and a half inch by 14 inches to piece our outer part of our little clutter catcher part of our pin cushion. And we're just gonna sew these together. And you might wanna determine if you think there's a right or wrong way for your hands or whatever fabric you've determined that goes in here. And we're gonna sew with a quarter of an inch. Now I wanna tell you, I am very tempted to do some decorative stitching over these seams after I'm done. So if you'll bear with me, you're gonna really love these stitches that you have on your special edition Tula Pink 570 or a regular 570 or a seven, mm, no 590 or an 880 plus. So stay tuned for that but I'm just gonna get these little guys stitched together. All right, I'm gonna press my seams to the tape measure fabric. So I want to stabilize the back of this because I'm gonna do that special little stitch on here. And you wanna hear how much of a frugal frow I am? Well, let me tell you. So remember our um, stable stick stabilizer that I used to embroider our stick it? Yeah, I trimmed off some extra pieces, just a little strip, and then I'm gonna peel this off and put this right over my seam. So now I'm reusing that stabilizer that would have otherwise gone to waste. How about that, huh? All right, now we're gonna do this one on the 880 plus. Now that I've got all the stabilizer on and I'm ready to embellish my piece, I have changed my foot to the 20C and I'm gonna go over here to some of my favorite stitches that seriously, I don't stitch them enough. And that is the tassel category. This is the 1100 stitch category here on the Bernina 880 Plus. This is also on the 570 and the 590 as well. So if you have a 570 or a 590, you also have these. I am going to pick stitch number 1114. And um, the key to these is when you stitch them out, the um, I like to stitch them with a contrasting bobbin, like white or, you know, something like that so that you can see the bobbin thread because what's going to happen is we're going to stitch this and then at the end, we're gonna clip on the backside and pull these loose and we'll have fringe or a tassel. So let's have a look at this. So I'm gonna line this up right in the middle of my stitch and the tassels are gonna to stitch towards the middle here. So I'm gonna go this way, then I'm gonna pivot my piece around and come back down this side.
All right, you can see here, I have my white bobbin thread in here and um, I'm just gonna, I can just trim the bobbin thread and then pull the tassels through and that'll give me like a loopy bit, but if I want it to be fuzzy on the end, like a fluffy tassel, then I'm gonna trim really close to the bobbin thread, but still be trimming my pink thread of my tassel. There we go, just like that. Ta-da. All right, that's all of those on that side. So now let's see what this looks like here. Look at that, so cute. Look at those cute little tassels. This is gonna be the cutest clutter catcher pin cushion ever. All right, so now this is gonna be the band at the top of our bag. So we're gonna sew this right sides together and then press towards the band. And then I'm gonna put the lining into place, but when I put the lining into place, I need to sew this little guy to the top. So let's um, just sew this band real quick and then I'll show you how to pin this guy into position. So I'm marking an inch and a half from the edge of here because this is where our straps are gonna go for our pin cushion top. And I'm using, um, I needed to use something that was a little darker so I'm using my Duo um, sew line marker so this also has a companion eraser that i'm going to use at the end to get those little dots out so here's our piece and then i'm going to take this because this is going to go up on it like this now this guy curves around to the back just like this and then this is gonna be kind of stuck in it like this. So trust me, this is gonna look awkward for right now, but it's gonna work just fine. And I've curved this around for some of us, that would be me, that are a little bit spatially challenged sometimes. I like to just lay this out the way it's gonna go together. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna fold under like this, ta-da. And then it curves around like this, and let's just go ahead and press it into position. And I'm just pressing this about a quarter of an inch past my seam there, because there's gonna be a quarter inch seam allowance on the other side. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do is fold this back and fold it around like this so we can kind of see what the inside of that bag is gonna look like. Then we have our marks that we made that are an inch and a half away from the edge and we're gonna get our pins. I'm gonna line that up right there on that edge with a pin, just like this. And then another one right here on this edge with a pin. And now this should be, with our quarter of an inch, when it's sewn together, our nice little straps will be straight and the bag is gonna look really cute. But just have to look at that like that, okay? So now I'm gonna turn it inside out. And we're gonna have like this on the back. It looks a little weird, 
but as long as you follow that layout, you should be fine. And then we're gonna pin this into position. Just like this, and just like this. Of course, I'll add more pins, but just to kind of show you how we're gonna take this over to our machine and stitch it. All right, so I'm gonna stitch this and come back and press it. This is gonna be a little wiggly here as we stitch, but we just wanna make sure that we keep pulling and lying everything flat. Um, not too difficult, just awkward, I, I guess would be my feedback here. So I'm just reaching in here just to kind of make sure the most important thing is to make sure that that strap is nice and straight as we go across the seam here. And that's what I'm doing right now, just making sure that that, that piece is straight. And then I'm gonna remove my pen. And now, And now I've got another situation here where I've got to make sure everything is nice and straight. And see how I'm lifting up here? And now I'm getting that guy to behave himself there. Now, what I can do is give this a little pressing, but you know what, in all honesty, I found it's just as easy at this point to do some finger pressing. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to press to our band. Just like this. We're, we'll give it a final pressing when the bag is done, but I'm just kind of giving it some encouragement to lay flat here. Okay. All right, there it is, and we have our crease down the middle. That's important. Now we're gonna fold this in half, and we're gonna match our seams like this. And then we're gonna match our seams here. And we're gonna match our pretty decorative seams. And then finish up here and pin. And we're gonna take a quarter of an inch seam allowance along this seam and we'll have a tube. All right, we're gonna turn it into a tube. 
All right, once you turn this back on that crease, you can see here, there are our little straps. They're nice and straight. They're holding the bag. I've got some raw edges down here on the opening, but we're not gonna worry about that for right now. We're gonna need those. And what I've got here is a 7 8 of an inch by 13 and a half inch strip of Peltex. And what Peltex is, is if stabilizer and batting got together and had a baby, this would be the product. You see this in baseball hat uh, bills and also in some hat brims and things like that, but it's, you know, it's used for a lot of different things. So we're gonna just make this a circle and I am not gonna do a seam allowance or anything. I'm just gonna butt these guys up together and then do a zigzag stitch to keep them together just like this. So I'm gonna do that at my machine with my zigzag foot and my zigzag plate. And then I'm gonna show you how to insert this into the top band of this pin cushion clutter catcher. All right, so we're gonna take our piece that we formed into a circle and just kind of insert it between the lining and the outer part of the bag and just push it all the way up to that crease that we made. And I'm just kind of holding my lining. This is, this is awkward, but you can do it. So once I get this up here, close to my fold, I'm gonna pull the fabric out over it. There we go. All right. So now we just have to kind of feel for it in here. I'm gonna use some pins. There we go. Let's just hold that into place temporarily. While we, we work the rest of this up there. And the reason why we're putting this stiff stuff in here is because it's gonna keep the bag held open so that you can easily drop your little threads and stuff in there. See how it's holding it up already, just like that? Now I'm going to use my 10C foot again, and then I'm just going to go all the way around the bag with that edge stitch and the needle moved into position, and that way I'll get that nice and secure. So I have pulled my machine on to be flat with the table, and I've taken off my tray so that I can use my free arm to do this next piece. So here is my edge stitch foot. And now I'm gonna move my needle position three clicks to the right. And now I'm gonna lower my foot and line up this seam right up against that metal guide. And then I'm gonna just sink my needle down into my material, put my foot down and remove my pin. And now I'm just gonna go all the way around. So there, 
is our opening and there it is inside and now all we need to do now is close the bottom so we're going to turn the bag inside out for that i have found the center of my bag my back seam is right here and that's matching up with the center here so if you look over here i've got equal distance here and here and I'm just going to simply stitch a quarter of an inch through all four of these layers and I'm going to back tack and then back tack and cut and then I happen to have my serger handy so I wouldn't mind actually doing a little stitch through here just so it looks pretty on the inside with my serger stitching and then I'm going to box the corners and then also put that through the serger. So I'm just doing a four thread overlock on my Bernina L890 and I have black thread or a very dark navy thread but it really doesn't matter. Now this is easy to re-thread but I have another project and I just didn't want to so um, I'm lining this up just even with the blade as I go through here. Perfect. And now let's box the corners. When I box the corners, I want to fold my bottom seam up exactly even with the side seam or side crease of the bag. And so then once I do that, I pin. And I am just going to measure an inch from the, or an inch and a quarter maybe from the tip of this to here and just do a straight line. If you felt more comfortable, you could draw a line. This is also a fun opportunity to use the um, bias line on your rulers, just like this. And I wanna measure out like an inch and a quarter, like I said, and I'm making sure that that's straight. And now I'm just gonna draw my sewing line. Perfect. And I'm gonna do that on the other side as well. So once again, taking this crease, just like that, opening it up and lining our bottom bag seam in perfect formation with that bag side crease. And so we get that little triangle and now that's ready. And I'm measuring an inch and a quarter from the pointy tip. There we go. Add a pin, and now let's stitch that on the sewing machine real quick. Okay there, I stitched that on the sewing machine and now I'm just going to line up this seam with my, furth with my um, furthest left needle there. These little dots represent needle placements. So I'm lining my stitch seam up with that little dot right there and now I'm just going to chop this off. And I'll do it on the other side too. So now I'm just going to take my darning needle and thread it and fish all my little serger chains back through the bag, just like this, just so they're, they're, they're tucked in out of the way. Just beat them back through that, those loopers, just like that. and then I can trim that the rest of the way, but I'll do that to all of my little chains to tuck them under the bag. So here is our final piece that we need to do to make our pin cushion complete. We're gonna turn our little 
This is our pillow, our pin cushion bit that's going to go into our little envelope style that we made. And so we're just going to turn this inside out. This does not need to be fancy in any way, shape, or form. And now I'm going to fill it. And I'm going to fill it with part stuffing and part of this filler. So this filler is just like a decorative accent. You can get this at Michael's. It's, um, it's rocks, like you would put in an aquarium or something like that. And I'm just going to use this. And I made this super high-tech funnel. And I'm just going to fill my bag. Now, I'm going to just take a little bit of wadding along the edges there and then put this to add some weight onto my pin cushion so it doesn't fall off the table. So I've got my polyfill wadding. I, I don't need a whole lot of it, so I'm just going to take like a little, little piece. So just try to take the polyfill and push it to the corners of your square, just like that. You know, you could also recycle things for this polyfill. Camilla is always trying to recycle them because she takes her little toys apart all the time and I find these lumps everywhere. Okay, so now that you've got a little bit of padding in there, you're gonna take your funnel Open up a hole right here in your piece. Pour your funnel in. Make sure the opening is nice and open. And then pour some beads in. Okay, so after that is nice and kind of firm, you might want to add a little bit more wadding in there. And then just kind of finesse it and spread it and rub it and squish it around and then sew this little opening together. Now, just as a reminder, you don't have to use the little uh, aquarium rocks like I did. I was kind of camping a little bit because I'm waiting on walnut shells to come at the store. That is what I would prefer to put in here, uh, a mix of that. And you know, it's just to give it that kind of weight. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, if you don't want to put anything like that in there, you could also put um, the beans like you would fill like a little, um, what is that called, cornhole or something like that. Uh, but whatever you need. And uh, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you make a clutter catcher. And don't forget, there is a handout with information, links to all of the products that we used, including the proper thing, the walnut shells, and more in the description of this video. 
at BerninaFNaperville.com. Under classes and events, there's a handout section, so it's gonna be there. Also, it's under our Fat Quarter Club product description. So hopefully somewhere you can find the handout, but if you can't, you can always leave a question in the comments, which leads me to, are you subscribed to our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel? Well, why not? It's easy. Just go to youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville and hit the little subscribe button, like, comment on our videos. And if you hit the little bell, you'll get a reminder every time we upload a new video. Well, in the meantime, stick it to your pincushion and I'll see you later.